What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sandro Goes Off, the only show on YouTube that's about to endorse Fast 9, even though it's a terrible movie. Why am I endorsing Fast 9? Well, you see, today I thought it would be fun, since it is uh, July right now, as the time of this recording. We are halfway done through the year, and there is like so many films I've seen so far. I mean, I can't review all of them because, you know, I have a fucking job and, you know, other commitments. That's why you hardly get any videos of me. I mean, it is what it is. It's life. Anyways, today I am here to talk about my personal favorite films of the year 2021 so far. Now, before I begin, two things. First thing, like and subscribe. Comment. Share it with your friends, share it with people you hate, it doesn't matter, it doesn't bother me. Second thing, I will not have the Demon Slayer movie, because technically that came out last year in Japan, so it's kind of like a gray area. Well, that is a fantastic anime movie, and you can watch it right now at Funimation.com. And I will also not talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League, because technically that's a director's cut from a 2017, 18, ah, uh, it's been fucking forever since that movie came out, so... I'm not going to recommend that, even though I fucking love it so much. In fact, we all love Justice League, so, you know, check it out on HBO Max if you have four hours to kill. With that said, let's get into it, shall we? And like I said at the top of, the, at the top of this video, yes, um, the first film I want to talk about today is F9, Fast and the Furious Part 9. Now, it is, like, like I said, it's a really, really bad. So you're probably asking why I'm recommending it. Well, I'll be honest with you. It's the, I saw it last week and the, the summer blockbuster is back, man. And it just felt nice to be in a theater, a packed house without a mask. Cause you know, hopefully everyone's vaccinated. I know I am. And it was just nice. It was like nothing even happened. You know, it was, re it was odd because when I pulled into the parking lot, I already saw one fucking dumbass already like spinning around doing donuts in the parking lot at the movie theater I went to. And I was just like, the earth, the world is healed. We're back, baby. But anyways, let's talk about the film. Um, it Just like that idiot in the parking lot doing the donuts. This film is fucking stupid as fuck. I mean, like, it makes no sense. Crazy ass action that defies all logic. In fact, let me just tell you about one scene in particular. It's not too crazy, but then it is. So, at one point in the film, Dom is trying to find his super evil spy brother that supposedly killed his dad. That's like a whole nother thing. I'm not going to get into it. I could talk, I could honestly explain this whole fucking movie, like almost like scene by scene, but it will fucking like piss off people. So, I'm not even going to do it. But if you do want me to do it, I don't know, shoot me a DM or message me and like I'll fucking send you a personal video of me explaining the whole fucking movie. But anyways, Dom is in Europe. And by the way, Dom's been diesel, for those of you that don't know. Dom is in Europe trying to find his evil spy brother, John Cena. I forgot John's I forgot his name, but I almost called John Cena for you know, I'm just gonna use the real actors, fuck it. Vin Diesel's looking for John Cena in Europe. And then he gets like a tip from Helen Mirren, a uh, very renowned actor which i don't know why the fuck she's in this movie but anyways she's just like yeah she's he's at the mansion over so and so and so vin diesel pulls up to this mansion women everywhere hundreds hundreds maybe 300 women outside all with the all with their cars turned on and everything blasting music they're all fucking dancing and i'm trying to figure out where's the music coming from did they sync all the music at the same time to play this music that's like just making everyone move their hips and shake their ass like it made no sense to me so it, it bothered me for one actually out of all of, a, of this whole movie that's the one thing that really bothered me to be honest with you anyways i'm dragging on dragging on dragging on so john cena goes inside and this david bowie looking motherfucker that looks like he's like short david bowie he's just like oh yes your brother is inside he is like uh really good guy you know he's like my right hand man and everything you know Vin Diesel's like whatever fuck you so he goes to inside and John Cena's at the bar by himself having a drink and then you know he's just like John Cena's like what are you doing here Vin Diesel like this is my world you know like you're gonna get killed get out of here and then you know Vin Diesel's like yeah I know you you have the device to control all the fucking things and you know I'm gonna stop you and then like John Cena's like 
yeah, go ahead and try. And then, you know, they both bust out guns, right? They're about to shoot each other. And then David Bowie motherfucker comes in. And he's just like, Vin Diesel, you can't do that. You see, that's like a diplomatic, you know, bullshit. I'm like rich. And, you know, this is basically a terrorism act. You're under arrest, guards. And then like a whole fucking squad of like these like people in like, you know, SWAT gear. They fucking come in, right? And they all put out guns on Vin Diesel. And... So they arrest him, and it's just like, well, the movie's over, right? Like, that's it. Roll the credits, right? No. So, like, they take him away, you know, fucking David Bowie and John Cena are all like, ha, 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 you know, like, we fucking got him. That was easy. And then, you know, Vin Diesel's just chilling in the armored car, getting transported away. And then, fucking, all of a sudden, all the guards that are, like, transporting him, they all take off their helmets. They're all beautiful women. And I'm just like, are these the fucking women that are taking their asses outside? And, no, it's not. It's another set of beautiful women. Like, you know, they're kind of like, like American, and then the main girl takes off her helmet. It's motherfucking Cardi B. She's just like, "Oh, Dom, you're crazy. You know, you 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 got me out of situations. I'm getting you out of situations. Oh, some bullshit like that." And you know, Vin Diesel's just like, oh, 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 "You know, I'm Vin Diesel. I have a deep voice." And you know, that's just one scene. That's just one scene of this incredible movie. Like I said, Fast Nine is very terrible, but it is one of my guilty pleasures dare I say, and I'm going to recommend this as one of the best films of the year because, I got, as I said, the cinema experience is back. We go to films to get away from everything, and let me tell you, you go in there and watch this fucking movie, your brain's going to shut off, and you're going to forget about every little problem you have in life, and you're just going to be thinking there, like, wondering, how the fuck are Tyrese and Ludacris surviving out in space in a rock car designed by Little Bow Wow, wearing a deep diving suit held together with duct tape. The other film I want to mention is A Quiet Place Part 2. Now, admittedly, it's not as intense as the first one, but that's because in the first one, there was not a method to kill the fucking... the... the Death Angels? Yeah, the Death Angels. They're fucking called Death Angels. That's a fucking sick metal name. Anyways, in The Quiet Place Part 1, there was not a method to kill the Death Angels until the end of the film. So this film obviously is a sequel. I mean, the opening is like kind of like a prequel, like a maybe 10-minute prequel to like the events preceding the first film. And um, it's really – I really love that scene. Like if you go out of your way to not watch this whole movie – at least watch that first opening 10 minutes because it's like a pretty amazing, you know, experience. So I definitely recommend checking that out. The film A Quiet Place Part 2, they have a method to kill the Death Angels. So, you know, you're not really like, I personally wasn't as like, you know, tensed up as I should be because they have a method to kill them. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't really take away from the film. You think that watching this trailer is going to be probably Emily Blunt centric, the mom. Actually, this film is actually centered around the uh, the older the oldest daughter that's deaf um she treks across like some dangerous terrain to try to find a haven for everybody and you know obviously shit goes wrong and then they come to uh you know kind of a, a climax and that climax actually sets up a part three which um is not coming out anytime soon actually uh a spinoff is coming up next for whatever reason. So, I mean, I'll take it. I really love this universe. A Quiet Place Part 2 is, like, pretty fantastic. It is probably, I guess you could say, it's one of my favorite, it's my favorite horror film of the year so far. But, you know, there's so many I haven't got this chance to see yet. But this film is actually pretty fantastic. And freaking Killian Murphy is in it. And Killian Murphy is a fantastic actor. He's kind of plays, like, the second banana to, like, the old this daughter which sounds weird but it really isn't so a quiet place part two i really really enjoy it and i think people sh if you have if you've seen part one i don't know why the fuck you're listening to me talk i mean you've probably already seen this film so if you haven't fucking seen these films stop sleeping on these fucking films a quiet place part one and two fucking just watch it man fuck and then you know i was talking about quiet place which is actually one of my favorite horror films i actually saw another horror film earlier this year but it wasn't really a horror film per se it's more like a horror comedy um and that is i guess an indie film it, it has to be an indie film because i didn't even fucking hear about it 
I only heard about it through like fucking trailers, like online. Never saw any trailers on TV. I mean, I'll have cable, but you know what I mean. They wouldn't advertise what I'm about to tell you on TV. And this film I'm talking about is Psycho Gorman. Psycho Gorman is basically a live action Billy and Mandy like movie. As fucking crazy that sounds. These kids find this like fucking beacon and they summon a fucking like grotesque monster like alien named Psycho Gorman. Well, actually I don't think that's his name. The little girl names him names him Psycho Gorman. And he's just he his his goal is to kill people. His goal is to call his friends and kill people. And it's like, it's fucking insane. It's like part Billy and Mandy, part Power Rangers, part like fucking trauma nightmare. You know, trauma films. It's fucking amazing. Like, it's funny. It's heartfelt in a weird way. And the little girl is such a bitch. You can't help but like not hate her as weird as that sounds so like i don't know this film is like people obviously it's an indie film people are gonna sleep on it but like yeah psycho gorman man what a pleasant surprise for you know this year and fucking i'm gonna I'm, I'll, I'll link the trailer in the fucking video i don't give a fuck yeah i'll link the trailer in this video just check watch the trailer if you're not sold on it, I don't know. I can't help you. You have you have problems. The other film I want to talk about is actually a drama slash musical. It's called In the Heights. So In the Heights, it stars Anthony Ramos, who is like a Puerto Rican American living in the barrio of New York. Um, I don't know where. I'm not from New York. I know like maybe three people that have lived there or currently live there. In New York, um, so I, I'm not going to fucking speak for them, but basically it's like a whole community of, you know, Latinx, I'm going to say Latinx, don't, get, don't fucking at me in the comments, Latinx, you know, Americans, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, you know, just living in this community, man, just enjoying life and everything. Um, this film is heartbreaking, but not for the reason you think. This film actually made me cry. I'm not going to say why, but basically, like, this film is just basically about, um, like I said, Anthony Ramos' character trying to get money and move out because his dad used to live, I think, in Puerto Rico. I think. I believe it is Puerto Rico. I'm, I want to say Puerto Rico. He used to live in Puerto Rico, and he wants to move back and, like, make, like, a bar, you know, like, because that's, that's beautiful over in Puerto Rico, man. Why wouldn't you want to do that? So that's what he's trying to do. I mean, he has f close friends. Like, he has a love interest. There's a bunch of interwinding stories. I think there's like three interwinding stories. A, a bunch of characters. It's a character cast. It's a musical because most musicals are have characters, uh, character actors and shit like that. So if you love like reggae, hip hop, Latin fused dance music, definitely check this film out. Don't sleep on it. It's on HBO Max right now. Probably. It might already be off of it because I know HBO Max films are usually on there for like 30 days and then that's it. I mean, they come back later on, but like, this is a fantastic film, and uh, yeah, like I said, I fucking cried. <laughs> and, like, fucking musicals, man. Like, I love them. Rent, Across the Universe, don't even fucking get me started on Moulin Rouge, man. That film would also make you cry. But this film, if you love Moulin Rouge, you'll fucking love this movie. So check out In the Heights. Oh, and, you know, the guy that made Hamilton, Lin-Manuel Miranda, he made the music on this. So, you know, fucking, if you love Hamilton... Fucking watch this. I, I know you will. It's fucking great. Finally. I'm only going to talk about five films because if I fucking ramble on, we'll be here forever. And you don't want to hear me ramble on unless you do. If you do, then great. I mean, fucking just, I don't know, fucking PM me or something. I'll fucking talk all day. I don't give a fuck. Anyways, Netflix put out uh, an animated film earlier this year called The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Holy shit. This film is fantastic. It's made by kind of like the same team that made Into the Spider-Verse. And it is fucking hilarious. Like, this film should not be as funny as it is. Basically, the premise is this girl is about to go to college. And so her family's like, yeah, let's have one last, like, one last outing. We'll drive you to college. And, you know, she's just like, 
oh, okay, you know, basically, you know, teenagers, angst, bullshit, college, whatever. And fucking the end of the world, the AI apocalypse basically starts during this family trip. And somehow they, well, I'm not going to say how, but basically somehow they are the only family left to save the world against the AI apocalypse, which is a very plausible apocalypse i.e. Terminator, but you know, we're not gonna get into that, it's really fucking creepy, but it can happen. But anyways, this film is fucking hilarious, um, basically this family band together through mishaps, you know, miscommunication, but ultimately they work together through love and strengthen, like, their family bond to persevere against this robot apocalypse, and I don't know really the cast members, the only person I recognize watching the film was fucking Danny McBride and Danny McBride is fucking hilarious so like you ever seen Eastbound and Down fucking raunchy ass comedy on HBO it's amazing but like when he plays as a dad and I was just like oh fuck yeah is that Danny McBride fuck yes it's a fantastic film like it'll probably make you tear up but in a happy way it's just a happy film and after the bullshit we all went through last year we need this we need this shit now more than ever and you can watch it right now on netflix my god like i said this film should not be as funny as it is but it is so definitely check out the mitchell's Risen the machines i can't highly recommend it enough this might actually be the best film of the year i know i'm jumping the gun saying that we still have a few more movies to get through this year off the top of my head, we got more superhero films, fucking Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn, The Eternals, fucking, uh, we're getting a new Halloween movie, fucking, I think Dune, it might be pushed back, but you know, fucking Dune, man, remember fucking Dune, fucking Sting was in the original, man, and we could probably, fuck, man. Oscar Isaac's in the new Dune, but uh, I'm excited, there's a lot of films coming out, so, definitely for right now check out these five films i recommended if not tell me to go fuck myself i don't give a fuck go ahead and you know leave in a comment what film did i miss what film am i sleeping on that i did not watch i mean there's other films i watch but why don't you tell me what i miss with that said ladies and gentlemen this is sandro signing off again like and subscribe and have a good night have a good day just live life later <laughs>